This video here is how to take a basic spinner and uh, improve on it. And you can make it actually a tri spinner with three points on the outside and a center uh, ball bearing in the middle. Uh, and so if you didn't see my previous video how to make this one, uh, please go back to my webpage and find the previous video. Just a quick recap. <clears throat> These are three cylinders with three cylinder holes in here and a box that was shrunk down to the same size and width as a spinner's and all of it grouped together. Okay, now to make this into a uh, tri-spinner, you have to do something kind of strange. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, on my basic shapes right here, and I'm going to drag an invisible box, and I'm going to uh, make it quite large. Now, I want to actually cut out half of this spinner. Now, I could guess at where half is, or I can do it uh, right the very first time. What I do is I like to look on this and see exactly how wide my spinner is. It's 85.5. So if I take my uh, trusty calculator and I do 85.5 and divide it in half, I get 42.75. So that means my box here needs to be 42.75 width. Now. In order to make sure I, I get exactly half of this, I can just put my box anywhere on this shape. I'm going to select both shapes and use my trusty align tool. I'm going to align it all the way. Instead of aligning everything centered, I'm going to align it all the way to the right. And I'll probably just center the middle as well, just to make sure the box covers exactly half of this shape. Then I just select the entire shape group it all together, and now I have a half of a basic spinner. This might seem like a strange thing to do, but when we get to the final step, this actually makes things a lot easier for us in the long run. So now what I can do is I can take this shape right here. I'm going to use the flip tool. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate it first. I'm going to duplicate it. And again, there's another carbon copy directly on top of this. Now I'm going to click on the flip tool and I'm going to flip it exact opposite. And so now I'm going to slide it. Oops, sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, I'm going to slide these two so that they are uh, touching. Um, so I'm going to align them so that they're both perfectly centered on one another. That's something that's important. And then I'm just going to zoom in and make sure that they're touching and there's no gaps. If you can see white in here, that means there's a gap. So I can click on one, and I can click on the keyboard and slide it in. Now, if you see that, it, it kind of went too much inside. And so what that will do is that will make the center circle way too small uh, to fit my uh, ball bearing. So I'm going to have to go over here to the snap grid, and I'm going to make it just 0.1 instead of 1 millimeter. I'm going to make it 1 tenth of a millimeter. So now I can click on this, whoop, and I'm going to... Just nudge it over, and that was pretty much all I needed. Just one, oh, almost. Yeah, one nudge. Oh, so close. Nope. Two nudges. That was it. Now I have my uh, spinner. I can click on my home button here and, and zoom back out. So now I know it's, it's it, it, this part just takes a little bit of time, but once you get it right the first time, you're good to go. Now I'm going to select everything, group it together, and now I have one solid shape again. Now you I know you're wondering why we did that, and again, I said you'll, you'll see it at the very end why we did that. It'll, it'll make our life a lot easier. Okay, so now I'm going to click on this shape here, and I'm going to duplicate it. Now I want to rotate it. Now I could rotate this if you if you click on this, these little loopy arrows on the side. I can rotate. Now if I put my cursor on the inside. I can rotate by 22 and a half degrees each time, which is very useful to get quick 90s, uh, 180 degrees, things like that. Uh, if I grab the loopy things and I go outside the circle, I can get very specific, goes by one degree at a time. And so I want to duplicate this. Uh, I'm going to duplicate it three times because when I'm all done, I'm going to have actually six. Uh, circles on the outside, and it'll be perfectly spaced apart. 
And so a circle is 360 degrees, and 360 divided by 6 is 60 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, rotation tool, and I'm going to make this be exactly 60 degrees. Okay, and that was my first one. Now I'm going to click on the duplicate button and watch what happens. It already predicted that if I did 60 degrees once, it's going to predict and do 60 degrees again. So now I don't have to do that again. Now, if I want, boom, I'm done with another really cool spinner. I can make this a uh, with six outside and one in the middle, and that's a really cool spinner in and of itself. And I can stamp this done. But that's not exactly what I'm going for. I'm going for a trifold spinner. So in order to get a trifold spinner, I need to erase three of these six. Okay, so I'm going to click on uh, my first uh, initial shape right here, and I'm going to ungroup it. And this is where that creating a half comes in handy. I'm going to click on this half right here and press the delete key on my keyboard, and that disappears. And now I'm going to go to this one right here and ungroup it. I'm going to click on this piece and delete it. And then I'm going to click up on this one, ungroup it, click on this piece, and delete it. And there you go. Now I have a perfectly spaced and balanced trifold spinner. And I, again, I can stamp this done, but you know sometimes you like to add a little extra detail to make it uh, interesting to look at. So I'm going to grab the invisible cylinder in here, and I'm going to make it, instead of 20 by 20, I'm going to make it 30 by 30. And I'm going to take it and just nudge it into this side right here. And this is, you know, it's a little challenging to, to center it perfectly. Um, and so a little bit of trial and error, and I can use my keyboard to bump it forward, backward, up, down, try to get it as balanced as I can. Uh, and so uh, then I'm going to duplicate this, and I'm going to put one up here in the same kind of spot, just kind of like notch out these little corners right here, and then duplicate. And I'll kind of put it up here. Okay, and if I think I did it correct, if I highlight, or I'm sorry, select everything and group this all together, now I have a pretty cool looking spinner with some notches cut out, make nice little finger grips to hold on to, and this is something that I can send to the printer. And that's it. Now I've taken a basic uh, spinner and I've made it way better uh, when I make a tri spinner. And so these things are not difficult to make, and um, Thanks for watching the video.